Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the first phase that I go through when I am creating a new costume look for myself. Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer, and today's video is very much a proof of concept. I'm gonna show you the sort of basic outline of what it is that I'm going for, showcase what projects I'm eventually going to do, why I'm choosing the pieces that I'm choosing. So the costume inspiration for this look is Bard the Bowman from Peter Jackson's rendition of The Hobbit played by Luke Evans. I've been told I look a little bit like Bard with the facial hair and the hair. Um, I'm not trying to cosplay as Bard per se, I'm thinking maybe more Brand, uh, who was eventually King of Dale, Brand, son of Bane, son of Bard. And I'm looking for a new costume because I feel like I'm getting closer to that Middle Earth Ranger sort of look, but as we get into the fall months and then the winter months here, it's gonna start getting pretty cold. And I don't think that my uh, Dunedain look is gonna keep me alive. So I'm looking for a set of garb that is going to be functional and keep me warm and comfortable in the colder months, which is exactly how they designed the costumes for uh, the Bardings, the Dalelings, the men of Lake Town in The Hobbit. So we are starting with the base layers. Base layers for most of my garb end up being invariably the same because that's how it has to be when you're on a budget like me. So we've got a linen shirt, very standard. I'm thinking of eventually dyeing this uh, sort of a gray or a sort of off darker tan, something like that. The pants that I've got are these faux suede um, medieval pants. These are the adventurer pants. Uh, these, they're, these are from Medieval Collectibles. I've done a video on them. There will be a link to that and the pants themselves in the description. Not affiliate, Medieval Collectibles, come on. I've got suspenders on at the moment because I actually like that better than wearing uh, a belt around the waist here. I'm gonna be sewing on buttons here eventually to the pants so that I can make some leather suspenders for myself. And yes, I know that my friends in the UK call these something else. It's just, this is, this is my Americanism. Suspenders give a very different look than just a belt or a plain shirt tucked in with no belt at all. It sort of bronzes the shoulders a little bit. I think it gives it a much stronger look. And then if you're taking elements of your costume off because it's too hot, you still have something there that places you in a different time period. And the boots that I'm wearing are actually uh, these army surplus boots at the moment. And the reason for that is because again, I want this garb to serve me well in the winter time. Um, and the boots that I currently have are not going to do that. These boots are supremely comfortable. Um, they are the most comfortable shoes that I own. I like wearing them a lot. They've got really good grip. Um, and they actually make me about an inch and a half taller, which is which is never bad. So the project there is that I'm going to be creating some sort of uh, foot wraps that will go over them and make them look more period, but I'm hoping that they will be functional and also look good on camera. So even with the base layers, we have a lot of projects we are doing. We are dyeing the shirt, we are putting suspenders on the pants, and we are uh, making the boots look more medieval. Another reason why I'm choosing the combat boots is because they look a little boxier. They're a little more built up, and that is very much in keeping uh, with the look that uh, Luke Evans' bard has in The Hobbit, because in the North, they're taking a lot of inspiration. The designers for The Hobbit were taking a lot of inspiration from uh, Eastern Europe. We see that with the pants that Luke Evans wears as Bard, their, their gray Cossack pants. Um, these have a little bit of that same look. These pants will probably eventually change, but the boots themselves are a lot boxier. Um, they almost seem to be, uh, they almost seem to be mirroring the boots that the dwarves have, which are also a lot boxier. They're a lot more heavy set. The, for, the very elegant boots that I'm used to wearing for my Ranger look, I don't think quite tell the same story. So that's why we are using the heavier set, weightier boots to help keep you, help keep you more grounded. So the next step is obviously to do my hair the correct way. There we go. That's better. Just a simple sort of half up, half down with it framing the face here. Maybe, maybe a little bit too long, but We'll see how it works. Next, we need an over tunic. This one is made out of a green army surplus blanket. You can get them for about $60, depending upon where you go. Um, so a lot of people have been asking where I got this. This was made for me. So I actually have a new belt. This was sent to me uh, by a subscriber. Thank you, Jennifer. I need to get a chape for it. That's the little uh, metal point that goes on the end here but it's got this nice Celtic buckle on it. I put that on too. I was just sent the belt blank. So this tunic was originally made uh, to go with a Middle Earth kit, but not a Dunedain Ranger uh, like the one that you are seeing right now. This was originally meant to go actually as a barding or a person that is from uh, Lake Town or Dale, because that is the culture that I was uh, very interested in as I was getting into Middle Earth reenactment. Um, two or three years ago or so. So this was meant to evoke that sort of fantasy, Nordic inspired sort of feel. So we're keeping that for now. That's why it's got the point on the end because that, that gives it that sort of fantasy look. It's still, uh, it, it still is believable as something Nordic inspired, but this makes it blatantly not historical. 
It's got the lacing up the front, uh, the same as Bard's does. That was not intentional. So the way that I'm thinking about this is that as Brand, son of Bane, son of Bard, at this point, uh, my, I'm saying my already as if I'm already playing this character. The idea is that at this point, Bard has already been king and he has since died and now uh, Bane is king. So at this point, there's no reason for my costume to be as sort of rough spun or homespun as it is in the, in the Hobbit at that point, because at that point, Bard is still just a bargeman. He's just the bowman. But at this point, having uh, been royalty for a little bit, trade and commerce with the, with the dwarves is a little bit better. I think it makes more sense for the costume to still evoke that same silhouette as Bard's original costume to link us together, um, but also to be a little bit higher status at this point because I'm able to get better materials as brand. Uh, so I'm gonna reuse those ranger gloves. See, this is the beauty of picking pieces like this is they can really work for a lot of things. So we're gonna go leather eventually. I'm gonna want specific items that will help differentiate the different costumes from each other. But for now, these ones work fine. But now we need the jacket, don't we? Now you see it, don't you? There it is. Now, now, can, you see, now can you see the resemblance there? This was a thrift store find. I got this for like $40. But it does have some things that need to be fixed about it. There's a there's a zipper on the outside edge here, the other zipper's on the inside so it can so it can close up. And because it's a women's jacket, it's actually a little bit small for me even though it fits just cuz my shoulders are probably a little broader than who this was intended for. Um, so it's a little tight across the back. I'm gonna try to have gussets put in here at the armpits so I can move my arms a little bit easier, but it's not too bad at the moment. The problem is that when I bring my arms forward, the sleeves become very short. And that is why we have the gloves so that it uh, doesn't break that, that, that continuous line from the upper arm down to the hand. It still looks like it's covered. If I didn't have that, that's very obviously short. But because the gloves are on underneath, it's not quite as noticeable. Another thing that I'm thinking of doing is just letting out the sleeves a little bit because this is just folded over this this black cuff here. I'll get about another half an inch of length there if I just let that out. It's going to look a little more rough, uh, a little less fully finished that way. It's fully lined with fur all the way on the inside. So this is really going to be the look for winter, I think. But finally, we have to choose my weapon. Weapon choice and design, in my opinion, can make or break a character. If the costume looks right, but the weapon looks wrong, all of a sudden the whole thing comes apart. So we will recognize this. This is my, uh, this is my adventuring LARP sword. And I'm going with LARP swords for this simply because I have way more LARP swords than I have real swords. So it's easier to pick a different aesthetic. Um, I don't think this one works. Sadly, I like this sword a lot. I think it's very versatile. I've got a video about why I think this sword is good. I don't think it works for this character. I don't think it looks right. This costume by itself looks fairly 18th century. It looks very 18th century, in fact. Now, long swords are not close to being 18th century, but it's close enough that it sort of just looks like a mistake, in my opinion. This sword looks uh, very high, very noble with the costume. It sort of just looks like I was trying to go for a look, but I just didn't know anything about swords. It is anachronistic, but it looks like a mistake, not an intentional anachronism. If we contrast that sword with something like a cutlass, now this is very 18th century, and aside from the gloves, I could pretty much just be in Pirates of the Caribbean right now. So obviously, something like this is just not gonna work. When I was going through my swords, the only one that I picked up and went, yes, probably this, is this one. This, uh, they don't make these anymore. This is an Age of Conan <laughs> uh, LARP sword. This is, they sold these on museum replicas. They don't make these anymore. So this is a very old sword, but it's ancient looking enough in its design that I actually think it really works. And there are a couple reasons for that. The first one is that it is a very old sort of sword design here with the with the type of pommel it is. It's not exactly Viking, again, because it's Age of Conan, uh, but it sort of works here. It evokes that sort of Viking lobe pommel look, the very large pommel. It's a single-handed sword with a very short cross guard. But the blade itself also has these little points, uh, which hopefully the camera will pick up there against the sky. It is a very fantasy look, so it's not gonna be mistaken with an actual historical sword. Uh, the problem with that is that if it looks like a uh, if it looks like a Viking sword, it's going to look too close to the Rohirrim, and then we're not really separating the Rohirrim from the Men of Dale, which needs to be done. So this sword looks very ancient. That sort of bridges the gap here with the costume and brings everything together. Now the costume, by virtue of the weapon that I've chosen, appears like it could be something far more ancient than it is in our own time period because of the choice of sword. I also think it makes sense for Bran to be wielding a one-handed sword simply because it's likely that the dwarves would have forged his weapon. 
the dwarves are a smaller people. Now, they could have forged him a bigger sword if he wanted it, but it would make sense if he just had a sword that they had forged, that it would be smaller on him than it would be on the dwarves, because they'd be, you know, about here. And this will also play into developing uh, the fighting style that I sort of see with Brand, and I'll be taking inspiration eventually from uh, Luke Evans' version of Bard here, but I'm thinking it's going to be very straightforward, very boxy, um, sort of almost brawling with the sword, none of the like fancy spins and rolls and all of that sort of stuff that I like to do as a Witcher. This is going to be a very straightforward, like, uh, not fencing or anything like that either. This is going to be very sort of brute force. I might even choose to dual wield with an axe or something like that, uh, since eventually Brand does uh, end up fighting with Dane Ironfoot at the foot of the Lonely Mountain against the forces of Sauron. Just bring everything together. We'll see how that works. So the project with this sword is that because it's so old, um, the latex is wearing off. I can feel splits in the blade here where the foam is starting to come apart. So I am I am loath to do, to do this because this is essentially an antique at this point because they, they don't make these anymore. You can even see where the foam is starting to split there. So this would not be safe to use at an actual LARP, which means I'm going to have to strip all of the latex off, re-glue the blade, and then repaint the entire uh, sword so I can make it look a little bit less like it's from Age of Conan and more like it's from Lord of the Rings. But the interesting thing here to me, and some people might not believe this, but I swear this is true, I picked this sword and felt that it worked before I actually looked in depth at what Bard's sword was from The Hobbit, and they look strikingly similar, actually. They both have these sort of points, they both have this very old sort of styled handle, um, and I just thought that was really interesting. Um, and then the more I thought about it, the more I realized why it works and why uh, what a workshop did what they did. And then I was able to justify why I felt like this worked. And I think it really does. Let me know what you think in the comments. The only thing I need now is a bow, but that's still a work in progress. Brand really is just such an interesting character. The idea with the history of this character is that Bane takes the throne, I think, in 2977 and then reigns until 3007. I'll, if I'm wrong, I'll put that right there. But the idea is that I am, my, my persona is Brand or one of Brand's friends or something like that. You know, if in your head canon, I don't look enough like Luke Evans to be his grandson, um, totally get that. The idea is that I'm somewhere in the reign of King Bane. This is before the War for the Ring. This is before Frodo receives the ring from Bilbo. Uh, Brand is sort of uh, coming into his own at this point. His dad's still the king and he is able to go out and do his own stuff. If he were to be in a movie adaptation, Maybe I'll do a whole video on this. If I were to play Brand, son of Bane, I think it would be really important to sort of tie everyone together. Bane in The Hobbit wears a lot of the same sort of silhouette as his father Bard. I think it's, I think it would be important to tie those uh, together, at least at the very beginning of that story. And then Brand goes on to become a king in his own right. But he is, he's, you know, he's the son of, of absolute legends like Bard, the bowman, slayer of smog. Uh, and then and then Bane, who was there and knew Bilbo and met the dwarves of Erebor, and then Brand himself has to come into his own and become a king in his own right. And then he, spoiler alert, if you haven't uh, read the books, I think this is in, in the appendices actually, uh, that Brand then uh, dies valiantly in battle at, at the gates of Erebor during the war. And then Dane, uh, who was fighting alongside him, protects his body, and that is his last stance too. So that it's, it's a really, Oh, it's just such a cool story. I'm telling you, when this happens, I'm going to be ready. When, when the time comes, when they tell the story of the War of the North, I'm going to be ready to audition for this role. I'll have done all of the work already. I'm going to work on my Welsh accent so I can sound like Luke Evans. So if you've got suggestions or additions that you think I can make to this, ways to make it look better, uh, then go ahead and drop those in the comments below. And if you'd like to stroke my ego, then you can tell me that I look like Bran, son of Bane, son of Bard, that you think I could play that character make me feel really good about myself. Lots of projects I still need to do with this. The sword is probably going to be the biggest one, followed by uh, the zipper here that I need to remove. And if you'd like to check out some other projects that I've done, costume related or prop related on the channel, you can check those out here. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.